Hello and welcome to Chicago Reacts. My name is Lauren and today I am going to be watching How to Drink. Um, he's made the drinks in Starfield now. Uh, so I'm excited. Um, I've heard good things about Starfield. I've heard bad things about Starfield. I've heard things about Starfield. Um, I did not realize that there were cocktails involved. So I'm excited to see what it is that he's going to pull out here. If you want to see more stuff like this, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know what you would like to see in the comments below. I am not drinking today. I am sick still, so I've got my tea, but uh, y'all can go ahead and, and tell me how these drinks go. At some point, there's some of these that I want to try making myself. Like, any of the drinks that he makes like that uh, look good to me, I'm like, I kind of want to try making them. I haven't gotten around to it, but I want to. If that's something you want to see, go ahead also and let me know in the comments below. For now, let us begin. Starfield, today on How to Drink. This is one of the drinks. That's good. Starfield, today on How to Drink. Little one of the drinks. That's good. That's really that looks good. looks good. I love this drink. That looks like maybe it has some like Chambord or something in it. That's really, mm, or blackberry puree. Some kind of mm, mint. Is that like what? Vodka, Chambord, ice, some side of soda water, mint. Purple. Ooh, is that Empress Gin? Ooh, it might be Empress. Ooh, that's an idea. Starfield has been out for a few weeks now. I played it, I jumped in, I found the bars. I am going to make <laughs> the drinks. I have ordered these drinks from simplest to make to most complicated to make. Okay. With one caveat, the third Ooh, drink okay. in this episode or the fourth drink. The Viking blood, that's mead. That's That stuff's good. We, uh, we had that at work last winter. Super tasty. One of the drinks coming up requires me to start an ingredient right now. So I'm going to take a mixing glass, and these are butterfly pea blossoms. They are dried flowers. You can buy them online. I'll throw a link up here oh, for you okay. to order some if you want. They turn tea, they're they get to blue, I think, usually on the tea, and then you add lemon juice and turns to purple. So maybe that's what that other drink was. That would be so good. Ooh, I And I have those kinds of... I have that tea. I have those leaves. They have a lot of blue pigment in them, and we're going to use them to make some blue rum, but they are also pH reactive, which will let us do a really neat trick. So we're just gonna throw some into my mixing glass. I'm just gonna pour some cheap rum in here. And look, you can see it's already picking up color almost instantly. There we go. They won't affect the flavor at all. They just let us do some neat tricks. The first drink we find at that spaceport okay. bar is called a departure time. Uh, it's described as a single shot of liquor Bartender's choice, and it looks to me like a martini with a lemon slice in it. That's a strange way to serve a single shot of liquor. There is some incongruencies in the visual representation of the drink and the verbal, the, the textual description of the drink here that I have to uh, rectify. Honestly, okay. I think that drink is just a gin martini. I suppose you could make it with any spirit you want, I don't think it's gonna be super exciting to watch me make an ultra dry martini. So let's just get through this one in a couple of quick smashity dash cuts. Two ounces of gin. We'll just assume I have some imaginary vermouth. Blast it at it. Let's get a couple of ice cubes in there. Stir that up and take a lemon, cut it into slices lengthwise. So here's my one twist I'm gonna put onto that so that it's not simply nothing. We're going to do a quick spritz of absinthe into the glass. Ooh, fun. Stuff. Drop in our two lemon wedges and our chilled gin. And there it is. The departure time, the drink for people sure. you hate. I, I didn't play the game enough to find out if there's like a well-known toast from it or not, but insert said toast here. Otherwise, cheers. Yeah, I mean, that's really dry. <laughs> you do get like a, a little bit of a floral kind of an element off of my unnecessary spritz of absinthe and the lemons. The lemons will do something to it over time. You know, if you let that sit, it will change over time. So why don't we set this aside and we'll see if it gets it better. See if it gets any better. There you go. Sitting right there next to Juggernog and Quick Revive and Sunset Sarsaparilla from the episodes where I made those. This Honestly, a lot of the times like someone orders a martini and they like they I will I'll do like a vermouth bath in the cup or something just so that they don't if they want it if they don't specify um if how like dry or dirty they want it, I'll do like a little vermouth bath in the cup just so like just so it has something other than just liquor in this there. This is a new arrival. It is a classic highball made with whiskey and soda, lemon, 
and additional natural ingredients. It visually, it's served in a bamboo glass with a yellow to red ombre color. It's clearly a tiki drink. It has a lime wheel and some kind of a red and orange leaf on top. I am fresh out of red and orange leaves. <laughs> uh, I do have some mint though, which I think will go well with what we're gonna build here. It says, it's interesting, it gets lemon in the drink, but you can see that it's a lime on top. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Okay, all right, to get this started, we're going to need a lime, probably about a half an ounce of lime juice. That's what we're going for. And half an ounce of lemon. Half an ounce of simple syrup, not too much. Full ounce go a citrus, wow. That. That's about a third. Thirds would be nice. We put thirds in a jigger. We wanna do half an ounce of Campari. If you're not familiar, this is a bitter liqueur, probably most directly associated with a drink called the Negroni, which is quite popular. Yep. A, a lot of people really, really like a Negroni. I do not like a Negroni. I'm not a big Campari fan. I don't like Campari or Aperol or like Aperitivos. Like I'm not a big fan of bitter in my liquor. Um, I don't like overly sweet and I don't like bitter. So I'm kind of like, I mean, sours are fine. Um, I like, but I mean, I like whiskey. I like vodka. I'm just like, Ugh, it's too bitter. I'm like, why am I drinking this? And we have a drink that's Campari, Aperol and rum. And it's like, that is so bitter. And I'm like, you guys, it has Campari and Aperol in it. And for me, honestly, I can't really taste too much of a difference between Campari and Aperol but that's just me and my profile and the fact that I haven't drank too much of either of them because I don't like them. I'm not a fan of Negronis generally. Me neither. And um, we're gonna do two ounces of Irish whiskey. Let me see how this is. Oh, delightful, delightful. We're gonna shake this. One thing I like about Negronis though is they are very easy to make. They're quick. So like people are ordering like, and we, we have a lot of pre-batched cocktails. So like before a shift, the ones that are most popular will like make the, the majority of it, keeping aside like the fruit or the citrus, um, and then just make it really quickly. Um, Negronis are one that's just super easy to just throw together. If someone, if I'm busy, I'm like, ah, I can make a Negroni no problem. Like that's, that's one thing I'll give a Negroni is it's easy. I don't have one of those bamboo glasses. I do have this, uh, you know, Olmec looking tiki mug, which feels in that same vein to That's me. It's cool. the same shape, basically. This glass and all the glasses on the show are provided by Visky Glassware. Uh, a while back, they asked if they could sponsor me, and I said, why not? You have beautiful glasses. So now all the glasses on the show are provided by Visky. If you want to pick up any of the glassware you see me using on the show, use the link in the pin comp below. Use it up here in the corner. Use code How to Drink 15 at checkout. You're going to get 15% off of your order from Visky. Okay? Mm. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm going to throw some ice in here. Throw. Cool. I've got a Halloween party I'm throwing soon, so I might I might do that. Get some extra glass. Big spear down in there because we're doing a highball. Highball in our tiki mug. Strain this portion of the drink in. Uh, now I got to top it up with soda. I'm actually out of my CO2 bottles that run my drink mate, which I love. So you won't be seeing that on the episode today. Instead, you're going to see this lovely can of Polar Seltzer that I've been chilling under the bar. So very much like an airport bar now. Mmm. Yep. <laughs> seltzer. There we go. Got a good little mix going on that. And now, because of their little secret ingredients, I'm gonna throw a float of this uh, chinola. This is a passion fruit liqueur. Should kind of sink down through the glass. Yeah. There we go. Garnish that with chinola. Lime wheel. I'm gonna make a note of that really quickly so that I can get myself some chinola. I love passion fruit. At work, we have a passion fruit puree that we make ourselves, but I can't get that obviously in a store because ours we make so and a sprig of mint put a straw in it and we've got the new arrival mm. it's a very approachable pleasant drink there is a lot of passion fruit notes the passion fruit and the campari complement each other in a wonderful way uh there's just mm. enough tartness to sweetness here it's such a uh a welcoming okay. drink honestly and refreshing too that it's sounds that really good it's actually it's kind so of fun to look got... at uh honestly i like this drink quite a bit there is a a malty undercurrent from the whiskey that is welcome. I think necessary. It really kind of holds the drink together. It gives it sort of its bottom end. It's bitter the way that a spritz would be. So it's sort of like you, you know, it's in a tiki glass and you think of tiki drinks that are bitter. Jungle Bird comes to mind. I don't know how this would compare to a Jungle Bird. It calls to mind to me like a, um, a spritz, uh, a tonic, an aperitif. You know, it's got that kind of a thing going on, but with a whiskey and fruit element to it that is very, very mm. nice. I like this drink. Drink. I would love to have mm. this at like a brunch. <laughs> Maybe I have to make that. 
that tonight when I go to work, <laughs> just to try it. <laughs> or like a, some early afternoon dining thing. So the Viewport original, uh, it is named for the bar in which it is served. The Viewport, uh, the game says that it's inspired by a vodka screwdriver. It is made with alien fruit. Uh, although in the picture you can see that the fruit is clearly a fingered citron, which is fairly alien looking, I will admit. I thought I could just go get one at Whole Foods because I've always seen these at Whole Foods. I've bought them a couple times to play with for the show. Never had much use for them. They're always much smaller when you get them from Whole Foods. They're like this big, but Whole Foods doesn't have them because these are actually out of season. Uh, I found a farm mm. in California that produces all kinds of amazing and strange citrus. And they happily went out and grabbed me a couple that weren't quite ripe yet that are the size of my head. These things are monsters. This is gonna be a stirred drink. Uh, remember, inspired by vodka screwdriver, so orange juice and vodka. Uh, we could take orange and vodka and go with that, but it's clear, so it really can't have orange juice in it. Okay, we're gonna start mm. with Luxardo Bitter Bianco. This is a bitter liqueur. Uh, we're gonna pour okay. half an ounce, one and a half ounces of vodka, half an ounce of vanilla vodka, something that mm. I use all the time on the show. Half an ounce of curacao. <laughs> I know, we're getting up there. Yeah, the only time I really use vanilla vodka, I think, is if I'm making like a chocolate martini. Like, with the way that we used to make them was, it's like hilarious. Okay, this is how we used to make a chocolate martini. It doesn't make any sense, but it tastes chocolatey. So um, it's vodka, it's the vanilla vodka, like a little bit of that. Um, sometimes I would just use just vanilla vodka, but vanilla vodka, um, regular vodka, uh, Put some chocolate sauce in the glass just to sort of give it that thing. A creme de cacao and uh, cream of some kind. Just shake it up and drop it in. And it tastes chocolatey. Like the vanilla really brings out all of the the chocolatey notes. I don't know. It's amazing. Vanilla does wonders when you try and make it taste like chocolate. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's how we used to do them. Quite a few now, right? And half an ounce of Cointreau. A couple dashes of orange bitters. One dash of Angostura. And we're gonna stir that up. Crack some ice into our mixing glass. Stir the drink! I'm gonna prepare the glass for the drink by taking some of these long and skinny fingers from our fingered citron. We're going to try to hold them in place with an ice cube. Pour the drink Ooh. on top of that. And now take uh, one of those fingered citron, and uh, I don't know, if you could pull a peel off of it and do a twist, that's fine, but I think in this case we can just do some zest. It has a really fragrant kind of floral zest. Um, obviously it has all those citron kind of uh, notes as well. Taking notes for the fingered citron. Like again, like I said, I'm having a Halloween party coming up. So that looks spooky. I want to put them in a drink. It's definitely a um, jasmine note to it. I couldn't place it before. It is a little bit jasmine -y. I like that. Huh. And there we have a viewport original. Let's see how it is. Oh yeah, really fun. This is sweet and approachable. And he <laughs> I don't understand that, but that's fun. Like a VHS friend. More sweet to be too sweet. But it has a bracing kind of lemon front that gives way to a mellow orange. Those are different flavors. It hits both of them. And there's a slight this, the the commentary on the sides today are not making a ton of sense. I think someone was excited. Vanilla note sweetening it, kind of leaning it gently in the direction of something like a creamsicle. It is not sweet like a creamsicle at all. This is not quite an aperitif, not quite like a cordial, not quite a cocktail. It's, it's a little bit of all of that. I'll tell you what it is, it's a delight. I'm very happy with the way I decided to make it. Good love, love. <laughs> Came out all right. I think I got the look right. I think I got the taste right. I'm happy with this. It's a viewport original. All right, this next drink is called a- <laughs> I loved those. I really did like those uh, commentary on the side. They, sometimes they make a little bit, they like connect a little bit more. Sometimes they're a little bit more eclectic and they're a little bit more out there, but they still obviously tie back into what he's saying. This time was a little bit more out there, but that was so funny. Supernova and one, it's the drink for which we needed our purple rum, but two, a little bit of a problem with this drink. The description is that it is a liqueur slush floated over a sour punch of exotic alien fruits. Oh. Visually, it is a deep blue on the bottom that ombre is up to a light blue, even like a reddish purple on the top. There is no mistaking that look. That is the look of a butterfly pea blossom infusion that is interacting with acid, right? So it's turning Lemon, right? red from mm -hmm. blue because of the inclusion of acid. If it is a sour punch on the bottom, it would be red on the bottom, blue on the top. So in order to make this drink work, the thing I have to do is I gotta switch it so that the sour punch is on top 
and the liqueur is on the bottom. Otherwise, okay. we're not gonna get the color right. And also, that is the way that this drink should be built. If you're gonna build a drink like this, you should put the liquors, you know, the alcohol at the bottom. You should put the other stuff on the top. It'll, they'll blend together that way. That's the way we're gonna do it. So, my apologies, Bethesda, but frankly, you don't know. Frankly, you should have consulted a bartender, not me, but him. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, all right? You guys want these drinks? Come on, Todd Howard, wake up. Drinks right, you better leave it to the pros. Ask me. I will work for a very reasonable six-figure fee. We're gonna take a large highball glass and we're gonna start by putting into this the first half of our drink. I wanna do an ounce and a half of our pea blossom rum and you can see that it is very dark purple. Now I want a half an ounce of Kirschwasser. This is gonna be our liqueur slush. Half an ounce. It's a cherry brandy made from cherries. Now I want half an ounce of maraschino. This is a liqueur made from cherries. Now I want half an ounce of Benedictine. This is an herbal oh. liqueur. We're gonna set that oh. aside, I think, for a second here. In our second half of our shaker, we're going to combine one ounce of lemon juice, one ounce of grapefruit juice, and an ounce of peach schnapps. I can't say schnapps. Schnapp, really schnapp, good schnapp, schnapp, schnapps. Really good peach schnapps here from schnapp, the, the schnapp, schnapp, schnapp. Now we've gotta turn this into a slushy, and to do that, I'm going Whoa, to- Whoa, I just got dizzy. This is how you know I'm sick, because I'm like, I go like this, and I'm like, oh my God, lightheaded. <laughs> Uh, my world. This is my industrial grade ice shaver. Did you think I was kidding? Because I'm not. You don't need an industrial grade ice shaver. There's no question. This is extremely over the top. Get a blender. However, I bought this for the show a while back and by God, I'm gonna use it every chance I get. <laughs> Cost a lot less money than you would think. It just takes up a lot of space. Chuck your ice in. Now I want snow cones. I had a snow cone this summer for the first time in actual years. I don't know how many people have like partook in, in the snow cones, um, but where I grew up, it was like a staple of summer. Literally every place you like, they had them on the corner. They had them on the corner of like one of the busiest roads in my like neighborhood. Like it was just these big snow cone um, stands and I mean, sometimes it's called shaved ice or something, but like we had them at the at the pool, every single like community pool you went to at the snack bar had the snow cones um, with like a million different flavors. Like the, the most popular being like skylight and like egg custard and mint, you know, peach, strawberry, all of those. But like skylight was always a big one. That was blue. Um, God, we loved them so much. Snow cones were so, they were where it was at. Like, Every single summer, they were everywhere. I missed them. And I got to have one again this year because, like, someone had them at, like, the one of the farmer's markets that I went to this summer. And it did make me really excited. <laughs> Childhood. Lovely bowl of snow. Actual, like, basically snow. That bone <laughs> snow, anyway. Okay, so now we're going to take our glass. And I'm going to just shovel some snow in there to turn this into a slushy, like an actual snow. Nice. Cone. Basically fill it up. A lot of that snow. And now we take our second guy and we just pour that over. And it should create a really fun reaction in the color. Lovely. I didn't expect it to sink straight through, but that's fine too. It's kind of cool. I've that never seen, kinda... like that's cool. I've never seen a drink that's uh, banded like that. Worked out nicely in this particular building. You know, I don't think it calls for it in the game, but what the heck, uh, I'm looking at that and a sprig of mint seems very welcome that's to cute. it. That's cute. And there you have a super Nova. That looks really cool. Oh, so cool. All right, so this is a really fun drink, okay? It is, first off, beautiful in color, has a color changing component, which is always fun to watch. And obviously it had that deep blue, but that's lost in the transformation. You know, that picture in the game, we don't know when it was taken, you know? Maybe that was ta it's taken right at the moment of action. So that's what you get with a supernova. We we have a drink that, um, like we, we have a drink, it's, it's a take on a G&T. It's basically a G&T, but we use Empress Gin. And em we use a purple Empress Gin, because Empress, I think, has a couple of different kinds of gin. I've definitely had their gin not colored purple. But the popular one, the one that like you see a lot is purple. It's a deep purple. So you put that in and then when you um, add the tonic, it changes from like this deep blue to like a really cool light purple like this. Um, so that's a, that's a drink and people really like, and we like to do like, we'll bring the gin 
to the table and then pour the tonic in at the table because it's a cool little color change effect. And it really, and if I have time, I always do it that way. Um, and then we also have a drink that we call the Pink 75. It's a take on a French 75. We use the Empress Gin. We use uh, like a half an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, and uh, then Prosecco at the top. And again, that also has a really cool color change effect because of the lemon juice. So it's cool. It is cool. Like, it is fun to play around with with that. And that's why we call it, you know, the Pink 75 because it changes to like a purpley pink color from a deep blue it's just it's fun we enjoy it like get get some empress gin and play around or apparently this like pea blossom thing which might be how they do the empress gin i don't know but i'm definitely going to be playing around with some more of this pea blossom stuff because i can over wow. Explosive. i have it, has it. A really good evolution first off well balanced good amount of sweet to tart ratio here it is tart but like there is this bitter cherry thing which obviously i put in there with the kirschwasser and the maraschino that uh, you know i don't find in a lot of drinks like this it is it's different it's almost leaning in the direction of a last word uh because we have this lemon juice this grapefruit juice which is delicious in a drink i love to see grapefruit in a drink and the kirschwasser and the maraschino they Me work too. together to create a bitter mo moderated by sweetness cherry earthy thing the benedictine of course is pushing it a little further into that herbal earthy realm overall I like this drink a lot. Um, I think that the mint helps it too. It's the purple to green is wonderful. It's getting better now because it's starting to thaw a little bit. The only problem with a true slushy like this, like an actual snow cone, is that it doesn't really want to go no once you eat the spoon. It does not taste like anything I've had before. If you told me this was a alien cocktail, I would buy it. I think we did all right. I love doing this stuff, by the way, because it's like I get these this target from like a video game or something like that. I get the rules that that video game has, you know? It tells me what it looks like. They give me a flavor descriptor and stuff like that. And then I gotta like work within that boundary. It's very fun for me. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work sometimes for some of these, but it's a lot of fun too, to make stuff like this in this way. And if you think want me to try something like this, I absolutely will. It will not be as polished or set up as this, but I could set up like a little table off to the side here and like, make something and do something with that like i could make something like this happen if you all want to see drinks from a game or like drinks based off of a game something like that i'm willing to give something like this a shot um but y'all have to tell me that's what you want to see and i will try to be pleasantly surprised and to be like yeah i got it i did that thing you gave me sort of an impossible set of criteria nailed it very happy with myself it's, you know, it's important to be happy with yourself. This one is my favorite one so far. Shit, that's really good. He's still, I can finish he's still going for it. Ass. All right, so the next drink is called the Chimera. Now, the Chimera is a mythical creature. Yes. I love mythol. Like, so the Chimera, the Chimera, 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 whatever. The Chimera is he's how he's saying it. I always thought it was Chimera, but then I learned it was not that. So the chimera, it's like a mix mash of animals. I think usually it's like a lion and a lions are usually in there, but it's it's like a bunch of animals together. It also shows up in Dungeons and Dragons. It's a it's an amalgamation of three different beasts. You know, usually like a lion, a goat, and a chicken or a dragon or a cockatrice, something like that. That's exactly what this is because the drink has three layers. And I actually wasn't going to do it because it, to me, it looked like it was served in a can. That looks like a B-52, honestly. And I was like, well, good thing that drink is in a can because I'm not going to make that because it's impossible. Because this is an impossible drink to make. And I want you to know that, Bethesda. Impossible. Not really because I figured it out, but uh, it, it should be impossible. The number of things that are happening in here. So let me describe this thing. It's three layers in a highball. You have mild, cold soju on top a layer of fruit liqueurs in the middle and strong dark soju on the bottom. The top layer is white-ish clear, the middle layer is yellow, and the bottom is an orange red. Of course we have three heads, we need three mixing devices. Two. It really, like from what, I, from what I remember, it really does look like a B-52. I've only had to make one of those like once because my cousin was like, make me a shot! And she insisted, she wanted a B-52. This is, she wanted this shot, she was like, 
half a state, like half a country away from me. Um, but I was like, I'll practice it. So when I see her, I'll be able to make it. So I did practice making this B-52 and I got it. It took me like four tries, but I, I got it. And like, that's kind of what I remember it looking like. And then I haven't seen her. And then I didn't see her again for like six years. And then when I did see her again, it was for a funeral and we weren't doing shots. So mixing glasses, one shaker. This will be our bottom. This will be our middle. This will be our top. I need an ounce and a half of sochu. This is a distilled spirit from Japan. Korea also has a version, uh, soju. I think they're more or less the same, made from rice and barley. Ounce and a half like soju. of our sochu. This is the heavy sochu. Mixing glass so number one. Now I need an ounce and a half of Viking blood mead. This drink is chimerical. Sochu, mead, hell yeah. We're gonna do three dashes of Angostura bitters. And now we add a half an ounce of simple syrup. Now you gotta make the middle layer. Now we want a quarter ounce of Midori, a quarter ounce of Chinola, a quarter ounce of Italicus bergamot liqueur. Wow. And a quarter ounce of this Juan May plum liqueur. I guarantee already, if you go into a busy bar and order something like this, the bartender will kill you. And one ounce of vodka. And that's our middle layer for this cocktail. Now we gotta do the top layer. Wow. Cocktail. This goes into the shaker. Now we want our other soju. We're gonna use one soju, one ounce of this, half an ounce of yuzuri, yuzu liquor, half an ounce of gin, and now half an ounce of heavy cream. So if you've been following along, this is a weird drink. I'm gonna serve it in this yeah. highball glass. This is sort of a skinny little Collins glass. By the way, this is almost certainly the most complicated cocktail I've ever made for the show. This one's easy, it can go right down the middle. It's our bottom layer, now we need our second layer. And if this sits where it's supposed to, I know I'm in the clear. Perfect. <laughs> and now the final part of the drink, which is shaken. This part is always hard, like the getting things to layer like that. You have to go so slow and so careful and like you have to have just the right angle on the bar spoon. It sucks. I hate it. I mean, honestly, the the end result is usually really cool, but like just the process is awful. This should require next to no assistance in blowing. And there it is, the Camara. So it's pretty stable and separated into three layers, which is really fun to watch. You could drink it with a straw, but if you just tip it up and drink it, all three layers will combine because just the way the fluid dynamics wants to work. Well, that's what I told myself, but that's just the top layer, which is a light, refreshing, lightly lemon. You get that yuzu liqueur for sure. <laughs> White, green, and red lies. <laughs> A little bit of gin, but it's nice. It's very nice. It's very undersweet, but it has this um, lifted sort of, I want to say it's creamy, but creamy makes it sound thick and heavy because we shook it. It's actually kind of aerated and light, right? So it's very nice. If you drink from the middle, it's sweet. It tastes like apples, it tastes like melon. Oh, there it is. A bergamot, bitter kind of like uh, Earl Grey tea. And then I think the Ooh, apples yum. are probably coming from the plum notes, the plum uh, li liquor that's in there. Plus, and then the vodka, of course, is, yeah, we'll give it a little kick. The Chinola is not the, in other words, passion fruit. Not super loud here, but it is kind of giving this thing a little bit of bite that would be missing otherwise. Just a touch, just a touch. And if you sip from the bottom, it is sweet. It is allspice. It is honey. It still tastes like Christmas. Oh, and then at the very end there. Now I have the spaceship. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, they're having fun with these today. These side on the side here. They're having, why is it? Now I have a spaceship. <laughs> what? You get, it slides into those soju notes, which are actually really complemented here by the other flavors, by the, the Christmassy type spices and the sweetness. It's this spaceship. malty, ah, not like whiskey though. I mean, like, God, it's like soju. It's really hard to put my finger on exactly what that flavor is like, but the way it slides into it from one to the next, it's really good. I love the way it looks. I hate to mess with it, you know? It's so neat looking, these three layers that are really super positioned. I don't know if super position is the right word there. I'm not a scientist, but that are holding into that position. Last time I had it, it did kind of all go down your throat at the same time when you took a deep sip. Let's see if that works again. Mm -mm. Leaving that alone. <laughs> Commenter or like 
person on the side who is making all the commentary. You're my favorite. I love you. If I was drinking today, I would drink to you as it is. You can have a sip of my tea. Ah, oh, there's that honey. Let's mix it all up. It's a lovely drink like this. It looks so, like a pina colada. Uh, mildly sweet, um, fruity, <laughs> uh, nondescript, just all over the place. With some Christmas spices, and there's an undercurrent. Um, the two, well, the gin is providing some of these like baseline earthy notes that complement the soju. But there is like an undercurrent with the soju of ah, malty. I, I, it's hard. I've just discovered, I've just, I've just figured out who this guy kind of reminds me of. He reminds me of Tom Welling in Super, in a Smallville, in Smallville is who he reminds me of. Or possibly when he was in Lucifer, he reminds me of Tom Welling though. He looks like a little bit like Tom Welling. And maybe it's partly, it's like the, like just the mix of everything. And maybe it's just in this particular with his hair like this. I don't know. He looks like Tom Welling to me. Hard. I just keep saying malty. It's malty. It's malty. It's malty, not malty, though, malty. like an Irish whiskey or a scotch. It is different in its own way. It is malty, but not the same, which is hard to say. Oh, we made it so ugly. It curdled instantly. In the yeah, place. that looks gross now. Gross now. Don't do that, though. Leave it in its, leave it in its beautiful I don't even want you to see it. Leave <laughs> I don't want you to see it. But like, I really do think so. If you think he looks like Tom Welling, tell me below. And if you think I'm hallucinating because of the cold medicine, let me know. Even in it's beautiful, pristine, three layered state. <laughs> I did say I wanted to check back in our departure time, see how much lemon got into the drink while I was sitting here. Quite a bit, this has improved dramatically, although it is now very warm. <laughs> but the flavor profile is much more enjoyable, much more nuanced. You get gin, uh, the absinthe and the lemon all kind of working together in a very nice way. And it's a shame that you had to go because you had a departure time because this got better after you left. But <laughs> five drinks from Starfield. Um, I played it. Ah, I, I kind of bounced off of that one. That one, it's not for me. I think a lot of people are really enjoying it. It's, uh, it doesn't hold the allure that Skyrim did for me. I don't know. And it's not because I don't like science, like space stuff. I love space stuff. There's other reasons. There's a lot of other reasons that are, are, are not going to happen in this video. Nope. We will maybe somewhere else some other time we'll talk about it. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys another time on another episode of How to Drink. In the meantime, if you wanted to see more of this particular episode, I think there's something I'm going to have to leave on the cutting room floor here. That will wind up over on my Patreon account. You can uh, follow the link in the pin comment up here in the corner. Uh, lots of extras back there. Pins, all kinds of other things happening over there. So... If you like the show, you want to support the show, you want to keep the show going, uh, Patreon is great. And of course, I appreciate it. And I, I hate even having to ask, but thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out the links. Check out the info thingy up here for the other stuff. And then also here are four more things from the 10,000 years that I've been making this show right here for you right now. Stick it out. Check them out. Click right through. Keep watching. Always be watching. A B W. Yep, always be watching. And he might hate to ask for money, but so do I. But, you know, we do have a membership uh, membership for the channel now that will, depending on what you, what you do, that can get you some extra stuff. Uh, $2 a month, it is going to be, you can get your, we'll say your name at the beginning or end of a video. Um, you know, so you'll always have a chance for that. Um, you know, $5 a month, you'll get some, uh, like early videos for and um, some extra videos as well uh, for $20 a month you get to choose a video for one of us to watch um, and we will put it out like ASAP like it'll go out really quickly um, and then of course you get to back you have everything else as well so you know we have we have that now um, we just we figured it would be easier to have something for like specifically the channel as opposed to the Patreon, um, which we mostly use for anime stuff. So a lot of people aren't super into that. So it's like, well, let's just put some stuff on our channel here with some of similar perks. And that way, you know, it's all in one place. So that's what we're doing there. Uh, 
thank you again for watching this video. Uh, feel free to check out that membership. If you have any questions, talk to me in the community page or on our Discord. You can also check out our other channels in the description box below. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.